Hey guys, my name is Brian Cusco, and I'm here from Triple B TV. I've been keeping snakes for most of my life. When Jay suggested that I do a video for his channel, I was super stoked. Well, I hope you enjoy it. You're watching Prehistoric Pets TV, Triple B style. It's always been a term that I've liked, but I've never been willing to use it because I felt like it was like corny. One day I just decided, why is it corny? It's, this is your dream, you're living it. And I, and I thought, and I, one day I came up with this little conclusion. I have no idea what tomorrow holds. And I get surprises, great surprises all the time. You know, it's like a dream, you know, and you're in the middle of a dream, you don't know what's gonna happen next. You know, basically when I was really young, we were really, I was really poor, I lived with my father. So when all the other kids were playing with all their fancy toys, I was out playing with snakes and lizards and frogs. And at 13, I actually had about a 15 foot reticulated python. My dad was like 60 years old and we were, and, you know, and he was my single dad and he let me take this giant python. Well, I would not recommend that. So somebody was watching out for me besides my dad. <laughs> I don't know how I got so lucky because it was so tame and it was an awesome pet but I just like big snakes from the very get-go. I ended up having, starting my own business at, at a, like, you know, 15 years old, a fishing business. 14, actually, I started, I built a boat at 14 and I started fishing. And all of a sudden I went from being poor to having money. I got married, I got married at 22 years old. And when I married Becky, uh, I decided that, we decided that basically fishing business wasn't the great, business for uh, raising kids. And she said, well, why don't we get us something that we can do together like a pet store? So the place that I used to hang out at, I just went in there and we were talking and he sold me the store. Let me see if I remember right, it was like about $38,000, which was a lot of money. And I made payments for years and we struggled and, and we had dogs and cats and birds and uh, grooming, all kinds of different stuff. And eventually what ended up happening was the dogs and cats got bumped. So, and uh, my wife goes, ah, just do whatever you want. And that's what we basically ended up opening a second store, which was the first prehistoric pets. I would love to say I made up the name, but one of my customers had the name and uh, I kept telling him, you better sell me that name or I'm gonna steal it, it's your option. And he kept telling me, no, I ain't selling it, I ain't selling it, I ain't selling it. He loves Saranam boas. And I had Sarinams that I was ha importing from Holland. And uh, so I took them with me to the airport. And when we got there, you know, we were going through them and there were stupid, gorgeous Sarinam boas like nobody's ever seen in the whole United States. And, and I basically just told them, you know, I think I could maybe trade you that. I'm willing to give you a pair of those Sarinams for that prehistoric pet's name. Okay, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> the reason why I have the reptile zoo is real simple. When I was a little kid, this was this is my dream. I used to go to a place called the Alligator Farm, you know, up there by uh, Knott's Berry Farm, and it was epic place. And it was like a little honey hole of, you know, giant crocodiles and alligators and snakes. And eventually, the ground became so valuable that they just closed down. And, you know, I was devastated. Well, I watch little kids come here, and I just think, man, I can't let this die. I had all the stuff done, all the animals in it, no way to support it. And I just decided, hey, the people, if they want it, they're gonna have to help participate. I only reason why I ever started the page was because the government started causing problems. And it seemed unrealistic and I felt like we needed a voice. And, you know, I saw Brian Barcheck, he had already had a channel for a while and he made this HR669 video and I thought, man, I'm gonna have to get off my butt and do something because I don't like people thinking I'm bragging or, you know, but that's not what I do this for. Snakes can be dangerous, but I mean, the definition of danger, she's becoming more predictable, is a very broad word. I mean, yeah, I might, I could have gotten bad enough to need stitches. You know, if I work with glass, you know, I could cut tendons and, and this guy could have cut tendons. It's just the way it is. You know, you trip, you fall, 
I saw a guy from Edison on TV just a couple days ago. <laughs> Done. He worked with electricity. That's dangerous. Working with venomous snakes is dangerous. Skydiving and all those things. And that doesn't mean they're that dangerous. It just means they're dangerous. You know, I mean, it's just the way life is. Crossing the street's dangerous. Anything can happen anywhere. And I'm not suggesting that I'm immune to, to it because I've been doing it for 30 years. But I can suggest that we've done over 15 or 18,000 presentations, everyone ending with a big Burmese python being held, millions, literally hundreds of millions of interactions with no incidences. So I can't be that lucky. It's easy when everything's all honey and grapes and you know what I mean, and it just, Money's coming in fast as it needs to go out and you can kind of just go, you know, but when you have no money and you got, you know, huge bills and you're, you know, messing with city permits and you got the federal government you're in a lawsuit over because they need more money for their billions of dollars to, you know, that they're going to put in to save the world. It's insane. It's literally, I just, I just think I have to keep going. If I stopped every time that I should have given up, and I say really should have given up, I would have failed five times. So I've, I've been out of business five times, and I just didn't give up. I just dug my feet in and said, I'm going to make it. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I mean, this side here that I'm building is, is, you know, I've been three years trying to get this stupid thing done. And what are you going to do? You give up? I just, I don't know how to give up. I, I think from being orphaned <laughs> and having your, you know, having your mom die at four, having your dad die at 14, having no family. I think all those things played into why we're still in business. <laughs> I'm sitting here crying. It's simple. Passion. That passion is important things to follow it. Don't let anybody take that away.